2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. You don't have to stand. This is Paul speaking. The Bible says, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn. Everybody say a thorn. In my flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Verse 8, for this thing I was... I besought the Lord three times or thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities. In persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. And I want to talk to you this morning. Just going to talk to you. I'm going to try to be too boisterous this morning. Kind of just want to teach a little bit. The danger of feeling strong. The danger of feeling strong. Amen. Now, Paul says... There was given to me a thorn in my flesh. And in verse 8, he says, I besought the Lord. Or another translation says, I pleaded with God to take this from me. Amen. This is a question that I would like to ask all of us this morning. How much of our prayers are to change what has been given or allowed in our life? If you look at the constructs of your prayers, how much of that is to change what is? Because Paul said, I was given a thorn, and I asked him to change it, to take it away. Understand, we love comfort. We love comfort. We love the AC right where it needs to be when it's summer. And here in Victoria, that's about 63. We love the heater right where it needs to be in the winter. We don't like to be uncomfortable. Amen. We like our comfort. We like our food just right. We like our bed just right. Our, anybody here got a comfortable bed you like? Amen. I don't know how comfortable they are in the dorm rooms, brother. I don't know how comfortable they are. Amen. I'm just picking but we like to be comfortable, right? We like our chairs to be comfortable. Who in here likes to be uncomfortable? I don't like it. There's nothing wrong with being comfort. Nothing wrong with that. But let me say this. There is a difference in being comfortable and then knowing the comforter. There is a difference between being comfortable and then knowing the comforter. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The whole idea. He's like, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to be a comfort to you. But if we aren't careful, we will spend the majority of our prayer asking the comforter to make us comfortable. Amen. Let me say that one more time. If we're not careful, we will spend the majority of our time... Asking God to change everything in our life that we don't like or that is making us uncomfortable. Amen. And there is a difference, and that's what the Holy Ghost wants us to fixate in on this morning. And I'm not saying that God doesn't do stuff for us. He answers prayer, He heals, He delivers. We can all testify to that. Amen. But knowing the Comforter. And then asking him to make us comfortable are two totally separate things. Because the Bible says, Psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's not a fun place. It's a valley, it's a shadow, and it's death. Those are all things that are not fun. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. The comforter. Thou art with me. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But if we're not careful, we want the comforter to allow us to bypass the valley of the shadow of death. And that's not always the promise. Amen. I tell people all the time, it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. But we cannot expect God to always take away the valley, the valley, just like Paul wanted his thorn removed. And sometimes God will answer these prayers for you. But the promise of God is to be with us, comfort us through our situations. Regardless of what you're going through, you may not get the answer that you're looking for. But I will tell you what you will have present with you. Jesus Christ. There will never be a time that you cannot call out to him. There will never be a time that you cannot reach out to him. Not to save you from the valley, but I promise you he will be with you all the way through those uncomfortable situations. Amen. Amen. My little girl has been teething lately and uh, she has her little burp cloth that she likes. It's a little pink and it's very comfortable. And she, it's her comfort. When she's tired or when she's cranky, she grabs it and she sucks on one of her fingers and she holds that burp cloth. That burp cloth does not take away the pain of the teething because that's the process. But it will comfort her. It will help her make it through it. Can I tell you, God's not always going to fix your situation, but he will help you get through it. I'm telling you, God will help you. The Bible says he's an ever-present help. In the time of need. Comfort means a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. Amen. Where do you find comfort? It's a question I would like to ask all of us this morning. Where do you find comfort? Where do you find your peace of mind? Is it in your retirement? Is it in your finances? Is, is it in your health? Is it in your foundation of your family? What is it? Amen. If any, if you find comfort, and there's nothing wrong with finding comfort and peace of mind, knowing that you have a good retirement, knowing that you have a beautiful home that's paid for, there is nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you this. If you find comfort in any other place besides the presence of God, it can and will be taken away from you, and it's called change. It's just a fact of life. Things change. There's a man out of my father's church, Brother Mitchell, almost had his home paid for. Beautiful home out on a hill. They went one, uh, to a, I can't remember where they went. They went to town one day. There was a lamp left on or something, and it burned the house down. Lost everything in an evening. That Sunday morning, you know what he was doing? He was at the front shouting and praising and worshiping God. Because things change. But let me tell you the answer to changing situations. Can I tell you? Your answer this morning is not for God to change your situation. Your answer is a God that doesn't change. That's right. so fixated on, God, I gotta have the answer. I gotta have this change. I gotta have this right. I need this storm removed. God, I need this storm removed. God, I need this done. God, I need that done. This change. Now, I need all this done. And God says, wait a second, I'm the answer. I'm the one thing in your life that's never going to change. Can I tell you health will change? Can I tell you finances will change? Family will change. But Jesus Christ, the Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, Brother Rankin, my, my answer is not soft. I, I haven't got my question answered. Now, there's a problem. No, there ain't no problem because the God of all humanity is still your God. Amen. The answer for a situation that you don't know how to change is a God that never changes. Not Him always changing it to make us comfortable. I'm going to say
say that again. The answer is a God that never changes. Not him always changing it to always bless us and make us comfortable. Look, no pain, no gain. And I'm not talking about physical pain. I'm not talking about spirit. I'm just telling you what the Holy Ghost has put on my spirit. I was hoping he would let me preach about Moses. But God changed my message. And I'm telling you, if we're not careful, all we will, all we will seek him for is the comfort. But God wants you to see him as the comforter despite you being uncomfortable. Somebody going to help me this morning. Trust him and rely on everything. And God says, no, I'm not going to let you go 
shoulder like that. Because you need me even when you don't think you need me. Where do you find your comfort in? If it's in your assets, I pray God takes it away. I do. Because what's better? You go to God poor, go to heaven poor, or dying and going to hell rich? Amen. The danger in feeling like I got in, and let's think about it. Everything, we want to feel it. Can I tell you, when you don't feel like you got it together, when you feel weak, that may be when you're at your most powerful point. Somebody say, God, don't let me die comfortable. Don't let me die complacent. AC just right, everything just right. And I became comfortable. I pray God, and I pray this very uh, carefully. But God, I want to do your plan and your will, even if it means you making me uncomfortable. Amen. The danger in feeling strong is when I feel that way, I'm actually at my weakest point. Because when he rose up, he said, I'm going to go out as other times before. Look at this. We apologize the new system updated. And uh, our scriptures won't show anymore, so we got to figure that out. But the Bible says that. He says, all right, I'm going to go out as other times before. God's been there. He's always going to be there. I'm good. I'm strong. I'm Samson. He did not realize that God had departed from him. It did not say his strength departed. Look at that. It said God departed from him. Can I tell you? He could have lost his strength, but if the power and the presence of God would have still been there, he could have still been victorious. Think about it. He could have lost his supernatural God-given strength for whatever reason, but God still be in his life and he still be victorious. This is why Paul said, for my strength is made perfect in what? In Weakness. That's where, not your strength, but that's where God's strength is made perfect in you. It's when you don't have the answer to the situation and you feel vulnerable, but you still keep fighting and you still keep coming. That's when you're at your strongest point because that's where the power of God can manifest itself within your life. When I feel my weakest, I am actually my strongest. Now I want to capitalize just a second on that word weakness. Because it says his strength is made perfect in weakness. Okay? How was Jesus crucified? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 13, for though he was crucified through what? Weakness. Jesus Christ was not crucified through strength. He was crucified through weakness. Yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. So when I'm weak, I'm strong. See, y'all see the correlation? When I'm strong, I'm weak. When I feel strong, when I feel comfortable, when I feel like I got it all figured out, that's whenever, you know, you will never be able to figure this thing out. Don't try. You got to follow after the leading of the Spirit. People that feel like they got it all figured out, they're fixing to go. You will never be able to figure this out. You can never rely on your own understanding. But listen. This is why Paul said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather. Look at that 
word rather? Like, what would you, where would you rather go eat? Chick-fil-A or Taco Bueno? Right now, Chick Taco Bueno, because I'm mad at Chick-fil-A. No disrespect, Sister Leslie. I'll take it. Therefore, will I rather, like, what would you choose? This is what Paul is saying. I would rather glory in my strength. No, that's not what it said, was it? I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ, or in my weakness, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Why? Is the power of Christ resting on me in weakness because he was crucified in weakness. That's why God keeps you in those hold patterns longer than you want to be sometimes. Because he's trying to manifest his resurrection power in you. Infirmities, that's not strength. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, necessities, and persecution, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I'm strong through the power of Jesus Christ. Where do you get your power from? Where do you get your strength from? Where do you get your stability from? Can I tell you, if it's anything outside of the church, it will be shaken. I said it will be shaken. The church is the only stable foundation left in this world. But the psalmist said, the Lord is my strength. And song, and is become my salvation. Samson said, if I, oh let's look at the deception. I almost titled this the deception of Philip Strong. Samson had it bad because he said, if I be shaven, I will, my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. He said, if I, be, if I become shaven, he never once said, if God depart from me. Samson never said, my strength is a gift from God. It comes from Him. The king that said, look at all that I've done. Look at all that I've accomplished. Can I tell you, if at the end of my ministry, I've prayed through 18 million people and baptized 27 million and built the biggest church in this whole entire world, I have not accomplished one thing. Because it's God that gives, and it's God that takes away. And if you think anything that you've got in your life with your own ability or your own strength, you're on the road to be a receive. Because here is the danger in feeling strong. Samson says, if I be shaven, my strength will go from me. And I will become like every other man. He did not realize he was already weak. That's the deception. When he felt his strongness, he did not realize that he was already weak. And he set himself apart from every other. He said, I will be like every other man. What he didn't realize is he was already like every other man. The only difference was Jesus Christ. Can I tell you the only difference between us and somebody lost out in the world is Jesus Christ? That's right. That's right. What other difference are you going to name? That's right. That's right. There's no good thing in me without Him. In my, I'm just being honest. I can't take credit and you can't take credit for nothing. Jesus Christ said, I'm not sharing my glory with nobody else. In fact, he even told the children of Israel when they were coming out. He led them by a certain way. He said, because I don't want them thinking it was by their own power or their own hand. Right. Yes. Because God does not want you to be deceived 
by your job, yeah. by your health, because I'm telling you today, you need him on your best day more than you need him on your worst. You know why? Because on your best day, you might be too comfortable and skip prayer time. Anything that comes into your life that causes you to trust God more and to plea with Him more, you better thank Him for it. Well, Brother Ray, can, can you play it? Sometimes, look, I would love to change every situation. I would. But at the end of the day, if God don't do it, it's not going to get done. And I'm just saying, God, whatever you have allowed, Paul said, what has been given to me to buffet me, punch, afflict. You know why? Because, Paul, as great as your ministry is, I don't want you to get too big for your britches. Be careful what you ask God to show you because you don't know the thorn he's going to give you to keep you humble. I listened to a message one time by Brother Kite. I was in his office one night. The pain of feeling. I got a quarter of the way through it and I turned it off because I said, God, if I have to go through what this man has went through. I don't want to know beforehand. Because it scares me to death. But God's grace. Is sufficient. So brother Rankin. What's my answer? Tell you the same thing God told Paul. His grace is sufficient for you. God, will you take this away? Will you change it? My grace is sufficient for you. Just trust me. Keep walking with me. Trust me. Keep walking with me. My grace is sufficient for you. I turned it off when it got to the point where that young man drowned and you were having to go tell their family. And I said, it literally scares me. It, honestly, it keeps me up at night. It scares me. But can I tell you, the grace of God is enough to get you through any situation that comes your way. Anything that you have. And this got a hold of me. And it can get a, it can get a hold of some people that are big givers to the church. It's a spirit and an attitude that people feel like they have some type of ownership because of the amount that they contribute. I've seen it. Can I tell you that is a dangerous attitude? Because it was God that blessed you to be able to give what you have. And I don't care the amount. You have no ownership in the kingdom of God. He still owns it all. I said he still owns say my strength is a gift from God. Look at what all I, one day I heard a man testify and he got sick and I was about to preach and he asked the pastor I was preaching out and uh, he said can I testify before Brother Aiken preaches and the pastor said yes yeah, sometimes that's dangerous but he got cancer and he said he went to God and he said God but look at what all I've given And I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, none of us gave what he gave. Because unless you replicate Calvary, which you can't, because he should have died at the whipping post. But death couldn't come until he paid the price for your redemption. Nobody gave more than he gave. And God's plan and will is for him to replicate his power in your life. And I'm saying, whatever the route he chooses to do that, I would rather thank him for it than to get mad about it and say, God, I can't do this. 
I hope this is all right this morning. Samson was already weak. He just didn't realize that he was already like every other man. He felt strong because of a prideful spirit. Everybody say pride. pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. So you have Samson who sees himself different from everybody else because of his strength. And he's, he puts his comfort and his strength in his hair instead of God. And when God leaves, his strength automatically leaves. And he feels strong because he says, I'm going to go out like, oh, this will be good. I can handle this. This ain't nothing. God's been there. This ain't nothing. I'm strong. I can do this. He feels strong. And all of a sudden, God departs. And then you have Jesus on the cross. And his flesh cries out. And says, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Can I tell you, when Jesus cried that, he was his most powerful. And this is what I've come to tell you. It's what God has been talking to me about. When you feel you're most forsaken. When you feel you're most out of it. When you feel like everything is caving and God, where is it? Why is it happen? That is actually when you are at your strongest point. But we like to feel strong when everything is good. All the bills are paid. Everybody's shouting, church is good. Everything's good. Woo! Miracle sign, nobody's sick. Yeah, everything's good. But what happens when those things change? Be careful labeling good and bad in the house of God as far as moves of God and not moves of God. Because can I tell you, if three people show up and all we do is say, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, and God is in the midst, that's good. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. What are you comparing good to? Are you Mama? Are you comparing good to what it used to be like? Are you comparing good to what you see on social media? Can I tell you all those things? And I make them too. But they're all fake. And what we've done, and I have to do it. I have to because it's like now you pastor two churches. You have your physical church and you have your social media church. We'll get 60 to 100 people here viewing this. We'll get three to 500 views online. So the word of God is going forth. But if we're not careful, we make these pretty, you know, people, these all these awesome trailers, they make these pretty like little, little trailers. And it's slow-mo. And it's got dun, dun. And it's like, man, that's so awesome. Yeah. It's got the right music. And it's got the right thing. And if you're not careful, you'll say it's yeah. good because of that. But can I tell you, we just had the piano. No lies, no screams, nothing else besides me. I'm on my way. It's still good that God is there. You saw that, Bishop? I said it's still good. I don't care what your situation looks like. If God is in it, it's better and good. That's what it is. And you have to trust that when you're at your most uncomfortable, when you're at your weakest, that that is when God is manifesting his power in you. Why is this so important? Because Paul said that I may know him. Everybody want to know Jesus? You don't get to choose how you know him. You don't get to choose how you get the revelation. You don't get to choose that. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So if he was crucified through weakness, that's why I'm strong when I'm weak. Because God is trying to teach me who he is and to try to introduce himself to me through the power of his resurrection. Does that make sense? That's when there's times where Nobody can help 
you. You look back over your life. Nobody can help you. Doctors can't help you. Medicine can't help you. Uh, people trying to comfort you can't help you. Nothing will help you. You get to the point. You're just like, all right, God. And all of a sudden, that peace just comes. Yes. Yes. That power just comes. Yes, that, 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 that moment where it's just like, man, like that is your answer. Amen. If you felt the presence of God today, that is your answer. Stop looking for something else. It doesn't get better than the presence of God. I said it doesn't get better than the presence of God. If the presence of God is not what you're after, what else are you looking for? Because in His presence, there's the fullness of joy. And at His right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. And there's nothing that the presence of God cannot not make better in your life. I need this. I need that. I, no, you don't. You need a you need a God that don't change. I said, you need a God that don't change. That He's the same yesterday. That my health may change. I may be gone tomorrow. I don't know. Sister Kai said this morning. We may not. Even, she's right. We may not even have today. But if I leave here today, I'm going to a God that never changes. But can I tell you something? If the devil can ever manipulate you to where you will constantly chase a life of luxury and comfort in the kingdom of God, he will rob you of the power of his resurrection because you will not ever experience it because Jesus said the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but I don't even have a place to lay my head. If you got a pillow, you are better off than what Jesus Christ was. There was a time, literally, there was a time that every place I went to go preach, God would make me give every penny that I had away. I'm serious. I'm not telling you you do that. I'm telling you he did it to me. And I didn't understand. I didn't understand. I, but you know what? You don't get to choose how God proves himself to you. Because if we're not careful, I'm about done, I'm on hush. If we're not careful, we only want God to prove himself through the blessing. But Paul said, I know him pretty well through persecution. I know him good through infirmity. When you come into the church, God has your life on a fast track to know who He is. And everything that God brings into your life is to empower you, and blessings will not always do that. It won't. Sometimes God says, you're going to have to suffer for a little while, but I'm going to show you a side of me that you have never seen. And I say, God... Why on earth are you taking all of my money? And then I was like, wait a second, it's not mine anyways. It's yours. And this is what God impressed me. He said, sometimes you're better off to be poor. I'm telling y'all the truth. Because I'm telling you, when my account got to a certain level, I got real comfortable. What do you find your comfort in? That was where I felt mine. And God says, if you want me to really do something with your ministry, you're going to have to let me control every part and you're going to have to let me make you uncomfortable. You're going to have to really trust me. And I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all, the greatest blessing is not the blessing. It's having to trust God for the blessing. Don't ever mistake that. Having, when you don't know how it's going to work, and the only thing you got is trust in a heavenly God that does not change, that is when you are at your blessed time. That is when you are your most Bless. 
God, thank you. Because I'm telling you right now, what would this place be like if God says, all right, when you get there, nothing's unlimited. Whatever you want. We'd already be on the loop. How big would the facility be? If I had no limit, God, I mean, I, I, I'd build them all. Big, big thing. If God gave you unlimited access, would you... Let me ask you a question. If God says, all right, whatever you want, I'm going to give it to you for the rest of your life. Would you become more empowered through the power of his resurrection? Or would you die just having everything that you wanted and comfortable? Let's be honest. If the question is, I would die with everything that I want and comfortable, that's what I would do. That's, you've answered your question why God hasn't unlocked the vault to you. Because he loves you. Because he says, you know what? I want you to be more than blessed. I want you to be empowered with the power of my spirit. And sometimes you're going to have to get statement. And sometimes you're going to have to get talked about. And sometimes you're going to have to get kicked out. And sometimes you're going to have to have some infirmities that you don't have the answer for. But I'm telling you through it, I am going to show my glory and my power. Let's stand all over the house. What we're going to do for the next few moments, we're going to thank God. For having to trust Him. God, thank you that I have to trust you. Can we do that, God? I want to thank you today for... Come on, thank Him today. Thank Him today for the thorn. Thank Him today for the thorn. To say, God, I don't understand it. I would rather have it removed. But if it means me being more powerful, if it means your glory manifested in my life, I thank you for it today. I thank you for it today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for it today. I thank you for it today. I don't want to be deceived in my strength. I don't want to be deceived in my assets. Or what God has blessed me with, God, I still got to have you. My strength still got to come from you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never forget. I'm, I'm about to let you go two seconds. Brother Esai, I can use it as an example. When you got two good feet, have you felt like you needed God more with your crutches? All right. In reality, you need him more with two good feet. And God told me one time, he said, if you will give in the bad times, I'm telling you, this is what he told me. He said, if you will give in the bad times, I'll make sure you make it in the good times. And I said, I'm sorry, Siri, they understand. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, we ain't praying her through the Holy Ghost anytime soon. That's what God told me. He said, if you'll give in the bad, I'll make sure you make it in the good. I'm like, what? Usually we give in the good, and when it's bad, it's like, nope. But I need his help in the good more than I need it in the bad. Because if I'm not careful, I'm like, okay, I'm good. Then I stumble. And I forget where my true help comes from. And I wonder sometimes why God says, all right, you're going a little too far. I'm taking it all away. I'm going to recenter you and realign you. Most of the time we get sad about that. But I'm telling you, church, we need to thank God for those times in our life. I said we need to thank God because he's helping us get to heaven. And if I gain the world and lose my soul, what worth was it? Thank you, God. Thank you today, God. Hallelujah. Amen. God, I want to thank you for your word. I pray, God, right now that this word 
That it would fall into hearts, God. That it would change them. That they would leave different, God. That they would leave empowered and leave encouraged. Amen. That you are the answer to their changing situation. The fact that you never change. And I give you praise and honor for it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the church said in Jesus' name. To all of our visitors, thank you for coming this morning. Amen. Looking forward to tonight, Brother Cole and Brother Gabriel. Let's come expecting a miracle. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear and the love of the Lord.